<laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> Q. Vic. Welcome back to YouGotIssues.net. Got a hot topic for you today, something that I'm pretty sure everybody has heard of and know about. You know, it's the uh, controversial comments made by um, Jada Pinkett Smith, as well as uh, comments made by Aunt Viv, the first Aunt Viv. And follow up with controversy, com really controversial comments made by Stacy Dash, <laughs> and her ignorant comments mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she, the, sh the ignorant comments that she made, and you know you can't help it. She played in Clueless, so what can you say? But we want to start it off with um, Miss Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith made uh, gave a personal stance, basically stating that she was going to go ahead and boycott going to you know the oscars this year okay but and let's not forget that snoop dog lion or whatever his name is now snoop dog along with spike lee I, I don't think she really garnered their support because that was their stance also now snoop did a radio interview and he said that jada pinkett just kind of delivered it in a much nicer way because, because she said is. exactly the way he felt about it so no yeah. she did not stand alone yeah well well jada pinkett did make a personal stance for herself but spike lee and and snoop actually joined in on it and snoop what snoop was saying was he he actually agreed with her but he came across a little bit more aggressive with no, what he had he to say which is cool Honest. A um, little more real. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Now, Jada, Jada Pinkett... He put it in layman's terms. Right. Jada yeah. Pinkett came across with what she was saying. She basically said that, you know, black people have been running to white folk or the industry for years. Maybe it's time for us to do our own thing. Pull our resources together and do our own thing. Now, I do agree with her. But... It came at a bad time because, you know, Will has the movie Concussion out. and uh, Well, speaking of which, and again, it's just speculation. Quite a few people want to speculate that her stance is a result of him not being given a nod uh, for an Oscar. But unless they came out and told you specifically this, you can't say that. I understand that. But knowing that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, because Jada has an uh, acting track record of her own, because these two individuals are such high-profile individuals, um, their PR people should have explained to Jada that right now probably would not have been the best time to come out with her, uh, her voice, her own opinions about the Oscars, knowing that Will could have been nominated for an Oscar or even didn't get okay, nominated. No, because no, if he didn't get nominated, this the whole thing she just did with I boycotting disagree. would have had a backlash. Her PR people should have told her that. No, she decided that she wanted to make a statement. She was firm in her statement, and mm -hmm. she made it. And she can make statements whenever she so chooses. So it happened to be Martin Luther King's birthday. It happened to be on, I guess, the the hills of realizing or knowing that her husband was not going to get an Oscar. Right. Whatever the case may have been. Right. But no, it, it with her, it wasn't a PR issue. So it really doesn't matter. She had something to say. She said it. I'm not going to say I agree wholeheartedly with everything that she said. Oh, and another thing, Aunt Viv. Uh, the first Aunt Viv from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air back in what's the her, 90s. What's her name? Miss Hubert, uh, right? Janet Hubert. Janet That's her Hubert, name. okay. When I was watching her opine, her thoughts on it, initially I thought that she was just maybe a tad bit bitter, but some of what she said realistically speaking, was true when she said, you know what, a lot of us have other things to worry about. Like true, true. Mortgages true. to pay, bills to pay, and so on and so forth. Well, 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 well wait a minute. Let's, let's not get too, too ahead of ourselves. Let's show them the video real quick. We're, we're going we're gonna to show you uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's video as well as Miss Herbert's video back to back. Okay, but something, again, that I was a little confused by, she did say, Others have 
real problems. But was she speaking of others in Hollywood on a lower tier? Or was she speaking in regard to, again, the regular folk? Because no, I, I took it... Let, you guys watch the video. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, today is Martin Luther King's birthday. And I can't help but ask the question, is it time that people of color recognize how much power influence that we have amassed that we no longer need to ask to be invited anywhere. I ask the question, have we now come to a new time and place where we recognize that we can no longer beg for the love, acknowledgement, or respect of any group? That maybe it's time that we recognize that if we love and respect and acknowledge ourselves in the way in which we are asking others to do, that that is the place of true power. I'm simply asking the question. Here's what I believe. The Academy has the right to acknowledge whomever they choose, to invite whomever they choose, and now I think that it's our responsibility now to make the change. Maybe it is time that we pull back our resources and we put them back into our communities, into our programs, and we make programs for ourselves that acknowledge us in ways that we see fit that are just as good as the so-called mainstream ones. I don't know. Here's what I do know. Begging for acknowledgement or even asking diminishes dignity and diminishes power. And we are a dignified people and we are powerful. And let's not forget it. So let's let the Academy do that with all grace and love. And let's do us differently. I got nothing but love. Hey, Chris, I will not be at the Academy Awards, and I won't be watching. But I can't think of a better man to do the job at hand this year than you, my friend. Good luck. And to the rest of you, nothing but love, always. So, because what? I got what you were saying in, before the clip came on. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand what you were saying, but I really think that Miss Herbert was actually talking about those in Hollywood that may not be on the plateau that Will was on right. at the time. Right, so we're talking about the lower tier, because right. when she said that, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know what? Had I gotten an invite, I definitely would have gone. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, it did not apply to us regular folks. So to some degree, how much do you expect for us to be able to empathize? Right. Well, let me let me say this to you. I'm a movie goer. I don't care what ethnicity you are. If it's a good movie, it's a good movie. I'll support it. I have no problem with that. But now historically, I understand what Miss Smith was talking about because the bottom line to it is you want to be accepted by your group of peers, thespians in Hollywood. But unfortunately, Miss Smith, Hollywood, Hollywood actors and actresses historically don't have any place else to run to go get acting jobs. They have to mm. go to the powers that be. The powers that be happen to be white, unfortunately. We have just a couple major production studios, um, Harpo uh, and Tyler Perry. Now, there are quite a few more. You guys actually have one of your own, Overbrook. But the problem is we don't have the deep pockets that the major studios have to get that distribution to actually put these movies out and place them in places that they need to be. If that was the case, in my opinion, I love Spike Lee's movies, every single one of them. I think Spike Lee is a genius, and I think that he should have been nominated for quite a few things, Malcolm X especially. Mm -hmm. But for so many years, the Oscars have consistently snubbed him out. But that's because they can. Exactly. The Oscars Absolutely. were created by white individuals who basically wanted to judge their own bodies of work, regardless of what they say. They can do that. Now, us starting our own, I absolutely agree with Jada Pinkett Smith by saying we should start our own. 
We should have quite a bit of our own things going on. But the problem with that is, again, we don't have the deep pockets. Now, again, Ms. Smith mentioned pooling our economic resources, resources together and having our own. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, but <clears throat> again, what group of people are you referring to? Because if you are referring to, again, your everyday average working class group of people, <laughs> I mean, what are they going to pull? Their reparation checks well, that they're waiting well, on? Well, it's like this, you know. What I'm talking about is average everyday people can make donations. I'm specifically well, talking but, about but, the individuals but, but that are in what? Hollywood. You know what? I agree with her also. But when you take your average working class person, and if that person could donate money and be assured that it's going to benefit their cause, they would. But historically, that has not been the case. True, okay. true, true, that true. That has not been the case. But another thing, you're talking about we don't have these production houses or so on and so forth, and there are a couple of black ones, but what are these black production houses doing for the, the hopeful black artists? Okay. Well, I mean, so you have, well, no, I'm going to interrupt you right there. Okay. Like I said, you, you have several production companies, mm -hmm. African-American-owned production companies, mm -hmm. quite a few of them, mm -hmm. but what we don't have is distribution or connections to the major movie houses or banks to get funding for the movies. Mm -hmm. So a lot of production companies, we got some great, great African-American writers who normally end up going into television because they can't get their scripts looked at or get their scripts um, uh, produced by a major movie house because the movie houses aren't looking for them or the distribution companies are refusing. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the issues that we run into with creating our own. Now, granted, if we can go ahead and somehow, like she said, pool our money together to help create our own distribution chain, well, that but would be a big deal. That would take great commitment. And I have to say, you know, and it's, it's very disheartening, but we as a people are not known for that. It, it's unfortunate, but it's a fact. Now, again, why can't we start... You know, we're accustomed to having to start from the bottom with absolutely nothing. So why can't we start with the, the playhouses or very, very small venue and build from there? But people have to actually see progress before you can get them on board. You just can't keep doing the talking. Well, give me your money. Give me your money. Tyler Perry no. started off like that. Okay, the there and, and there you have it. And Tyler Perry in his plays does employ black folk. Absolutely. He does. Absolutely. Well, the bottom line to it is we can't always <laughs> expect for other ethnicities in the world who may not like us to... We can't force them. can't force ourselves upon them. And I think that's something that you know, Miss Smith was trying to, you know, come across with. Again, with Will having a Will Smith having a movie out right now with concussion, I think that it just came at a bad time. And I don't necessarily believe that it had anything to do with, you know, her and or well, Will not winning. Maybe a little bit, but not really. I think that she's just him not winning just just jolted her back to reality. And that reality is this is an unfair world when it comes that down to African Americans. Is, yeah, you're black. Yeah. That's the reality. Absolutely. Now, I have to say I love Jada Pinkett and Will Smith. But back to Janet Hubert. Um, on Viv number one. Yeah, on Viv number one. Right. Now, let's show them this clip. Blacktress Janet Hubert coming to you, not in a post, but sort of in a post. And um, I want to say something about um, Jada Pinkett Smith asking other actors, black black actors and actresses to boycott the Oscars. Uh, first of all, Miss Thing, um, does your man not have a mouth of his own with which to speak? And the second thing is, girlfriend, there's a lot of shit going on in the world that you all don't seem to recognize. People are dying, our boys are being shot left and right, uh, people are hungry, people are starving, people are trying to pay bills, and you talk about some motherfucking actors uh, in Oscars. And it, it just ain't that deep. And here's the other thing. For you to ask other actors and other blacktresses and black 
uh, actors to jeopardize their career and they are standing in a town that you know damn well. You don't do that. And here's the other thing. They don't care. They don't care. And I find it ironic that somebody who has made their living, made their living and made millions and millions of dollars um, from the very people that you're talking about boycotting just because you didn't get a nomination, just because you didn't win, that is not the way life works, baby. Okay? And it it's very suspect to me. And I seem to recall, hmm, 20, maybe six, seven years ago, 25, whatever it was, what, what, no, I don't even remember, but I seem to remember at option time coming to you and saying, you know what, Will, you're the star of the show. Why don't we all get together? And with you, maybe we could get a little raise. Maybe the network, since you know the show is such a hit, and you being the star of the show, your influence would help us greatly, like they did on Friends, like white shows do. Remember that? Do you remember that? Because I do. Hmm. And your response to me was, my deal is my deal, and y'all's deal is y'all's deal. Well, karma must be a bitch because now here you are. Here you are. You've had a few flops. And you know, there are those out there who really deserved a nod. And Idris Elba was one of them. Lord have mercy. Beast of No Nation was incredible. That man is an incredible actor. You are not. Maybe you didn't deserve it. Uh, a nomination. I, I didn't think, frankly, you deserved a Golden Globe nomination with that accent, but you got one. And just because the world don't go the way you want it to go, doesn't mean that you can go out and then you start asking people to stand up and sing, we shall overcome for you. Mm. You ain't Barack and Michelle Obama. And y'all need to get over yourselves. You have a huge production company that you only produce your friends, your family, and yourself. So you are a part of Hollywood. You are a part of the system that is unfair to other actors. So get real. Now, for those of you who say, Miss Huba, here she go, here she go, here she go being bitter. Bitches, please. It's not about being bitter. It's about being right. You know, some of us got mortgages to pay. We got bills to pay. We got bigger shit to worry about than the Oscars. The only Oscar I care about right now is Oscar Maya Wiener with Mustard and Relish. And on that note, Black Christianic you bad. Signing off. Peace, baby. With that shown, I do understand what Jada Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith is saying. I do understand that. But I'm kind of on the fence. Of course, I want black folk to win Oscars, but I want them to win Oscars because they have perfected their craft. Because, you, you know, they have made that achievement. The same thing with um, Samuel L. Jackson when he made the statement in regard to rappers becoming actors and so on and so forth. And so it is kind of a slap in the face when you have spent so much time working at this and studying and rehearsing and practicing and perfecting it and you finally got it only to be you know pushed aside by someone who's not accomplished but because they won the popular vote vote I'm sorry now I'm not taking anything away from them but I get it so if you get an Oscar I want it to be because you're good you were outstanding okay and uh, well let me let me interject for a minute mm -hmm. I agree with you, but then again, then again, I don't agree. And the reason why I, I agree, but I don't agree, is because this is a popular world. Mm -hmm. People want to be entertained. Not everybody wants to go and see a serious movie. They'll go see The Avengers. They'll go see a movie that's entertaining, so forth and so on, or something that's going to take them away for a little bit, take them into a fantasy world. And oftentimes a lot of great actors get looked over for roles like that. They make the money. And, and if you really want to be technical, you don't see, you know, movies such as uh, a superpower movie getting nominations for Oscars. You don't, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I understand what Miss Hubert is saying. And she's a very accomplished actress. But in reality, being an accomplished actor doesn't do anything but 
make you an accomplished actor. Well, but you know what? But what that takes you to is the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you it's know. It's who you know. Absolutely. And I disagree with that. I mean, it's a fact of life. It is a reality. So, again, I clearly understand what, you know, Mrs. Hubert is saying. And it should be this way. It should have always been that way. You know, I'm, I'm a little confused because I would have thought, and, and again, I guess I can't speculate. I don't know what happened on the scene of the Fresh Prince. But as a woman, mm -hmm. I would have thought that Jada Pinkett Smith probably would have tried to be the catalyst to resolving this problem for Miss um, Miss, Miss Hubert, because actually, if you check on YouTube, she's trying to do a few things. I don't think any of them are taking off as she's planned, but she's creative. You can see that she's, she's creative and she's talented. But, no. but, 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 mm -hmm. being creative and being hard to work with are two totally different things. Okay, they're two separate, they're, they're an end well, to I means. Well, I said I it's, cannot speculate right. as to what happened on the scene. Right, Miss Miss Hubert has had a reputation of being one that is very difficult to work okay, with. Okay, and even know, oh wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me finish. And even she made the statements herself in a couple of her own videos. Well, okay. she was trying to put to rest the, the rumors I understand. that had been circulating. But no, other than the situation with the Fresh Prince, I had never heard anyone else say that this woman was difficult to work with. But anyway, whatever the case, maybe she was difficult to work with back then. I'm talking about now, if Jada Pinkett, oh, you know what, well, let's do the whole blackness thing mm -hmm. and lift our black people up and so on and so forth. Okay, then you know what, Jada? This issue was between this thespian and your husband. Fix it. If you can fix it and if you can lift her up, and give her another start, then you do what you need to do. That hasn't been done. Yeah, I don't think that Jada Pinkett was in a place to be able to do that. No, but, but I mean, know, I understand what you're saying. She should have been able to help out. Up. Right, exactly. Right. Now, I'm just saying, me. Again, I don't know if there were just some great atrocities that occurred behind the scenes. But, again, you know, as time goes on, we just kind of let go of, right. of, of the grudges and the anger right. and so on and so forth. And it she takes did. a big person to say, you know what, we're going to fix this. I got you. But you know what? She was, the way the whole thing happened with Miss Hubert, her video about Jada Pinkett Smith came across a little harsh and a little bitter. And that bitterness also came across as if she was a little bitter still a little bothered about something that took place well, in the 90s. Well, initially, that's what I thought. But again, if this woman's career was ruined, we're all just assuming that she actually did it. But did she... It. But, but, no, no, no. but no, no, no. Let's go back to what no, you just said. how many occasions, how many occasions have we just, based upon the things that we heard, we assumed that this was the person that was wrong, only to find out many years later, oh... It wasn't her. Which is an unfortunate right. thing, but honestly... So how do you know this isn't the case with her? True, it could be, but it's the nature of the beast. It's a part of the industry that she's in. But you know what? Okay. It may be the nature of the beast, but if we're going to talk about uplifting black people and not doing to us what others do to us, then it can't be the nature of the beast in this situation. I understand Because that. we will never move forward. I understand. We'll but, never build but, those production houses. But as usual... <laughs> Vic and I are getting off topic. Yeah, yeah, off topic. Exactly <laughs> so, so listen, so listen. I, I'm glad we're laughing right now because this next little piece, this next video. See, I told you it was three. It was Miss Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, Miss Hubert, and then Stacy Dash. Oh, let me tell you, my God. Uh, um... Contributor Stacy Dash. Stacy, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, what do you think about this? I think it's ludicrous. Why? Because. We have to make up our minds. Either we want to have segregation or integration. And if we don't want segregation, then we need to get rid of channels like BET and the BET Awards and the Image Awards, where you're only awarded if you're black. If it were the other way around, we would be up in arms. It's a double standard. So you say there shouldn't be a BET channel? No, I don't think so, no. Just like there shouldn't be a Black History Month. You know, we're Americans, period. That's it. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly. 
Exactly. Uh, Al Sharpton has uh, uh, jumped on the, this boycott bandwagon. He says, don't watch, because Hollywood, here's a quote, Hollywood has become like the Rocky Mountains. The higher you get, the whiter. The whiter you get. Well, that's not necessarily true. And if it is, you know, that needs to change. What I find astounding is that we've had a president who is black in office for the past eight years, who gets most of his funding from the liberal elite in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yet there are not very many roles for people of color. How can that be? And why is it just now being addressed? I, I can understand, Jada, uh, Pinkett Smith's frustration that her husband wasn't nominated yeah. for, you know, he did a great job in the movie uh, Concussion. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what does that say about how people are selected for these awards? Right. That's assuming they're selected by race, which I, I think would be a very dis a disservice to the people who are looking at the films and making the choices. Maybe they knew they need to be more, you know, integrated and 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 there need to be more diverse people in the process of electing in the academy in the academy uh, the the demographics of the academy apparently are, are secret but for the most part according to some investigation out in Hollywood, yeah. it's uh it's predominantly uh, white males mm -hmm. really yeah so maybe that says something about who they select or are, are they looking for that or the best movies and the best actors? I, I hope they're looking for the best movies and the best actors. The good news is that there's attention brought to it now. But like I said, over the past eight years, we've had a president black who gets his funding mainly from Hollywood, the elite liberals. Yeah. So it's odd to me that this has now become such an issue. Well, let's see uh, what happens, because uh, they are calling for people not to watch it. Let's see if the ratings go down. Yeah, I doubt it. By the way. <laughs> Lord for, Jesus. For, you see what we're saying? You yeah. see what we're saying? So I'm, I'm honestly, realistically speaking, Dorothy Dandridge <laughs> and Lena Horn will probably snatch her ball from the grave if they could, because this is ridiculous. And then on top of that, for her to say we need to dismiss Black History Month. Now, don't get me wrong, apparently she obviously is one of those women who, I, I doubt if she wants to be called black, so she's one of those who wants to be mixed and identify with this or the other. And don't get me wrong, if she identifies with and embraces her white lineage, then that's fine, but in no means is she to disrespect her black heritage, which is what she just did. She did. She absolutely did. Yeah. She so absolutely I, did. It's just. Um, you know, I think her, her cousin is Dame, Damon Dash, you know, formerly Rockefeller Records, very, very high profile individual in the um, <coughs> hip hop world. Even her cousin said that she was basically, you know, putting on an act, putting on a show for Fox News, cooning, if you really well, want to call it that. But you know what? And with him, this is her blood. And he pretty much said she was an, an idiot, mm -hmm. but he said it nicely. But for him to make that statement, it makes me wonder, is she just like the female step and fetch it here? Are these really her thoughts? Or was this orchestrated? Is this something since they know that they could probably well, utilize her as a tool? Yeah, well, but, but see, Miss Dash was basically coming across saying that, you know, we need to just focus on being Americans. But the problem with that, and this goes out to Miss Dash, the Just problem being with Americans that, right. does not apply to the black community. Absolutely. It does not apply Absolutely. to the African American community. And, and, and let me say this to you. It's just like the Holocaust. Okay, so we know with the Holocaust, those victims, uh, it was such an atrocity that France would paid them upward of $70 million. 60. In 2014, France went ahead and agreed right, okay. to give. Uh, the the survivors or the descendants of the Holocaust right. about sixty million dollars exactly. in reparations. Exactly. <laughs> so they just acknowledged we made a mistake. Now modern day. Oh, uh, and country, the U.S. I'm sorry, well, it was well, France and the U.S. Well, well, what I'm saying now is modern day, our government is saying, okay, well, we need to give the surviving or remaining victims an additional twelve million dollars because they need to quote unquote die with dignity. Now, first of all. The Holocaust was not an American issue. It was not. It was a human issue. So 
morally we did what we should have done. You should always go in and help the victim, underdog, whatever the case may be. So I have no issue with that. But for us as a country to say we will pay or assist in paying reparations to a problem that we were not a party to, but we refuse to pay reparations to a situation that not only we created, but continue to perpetuate is an atrocity in itself. And let me say this, reparations can come in many forms. It doesn't just have to be, you know, a, a check, okay? I don't know, it, it could be in land, it could be in health care, uh, education, whatever the case may be, as long as it was clearly understood that, hey, first of all, we acknowledge, we made a mistake, we apologize, and this is what we're going to do to try to lift up this group of people. Right, right. I understand that. And I, I think uh, Vic is basically saying that off of the fact that Jada Pinkett Smith was basically talking about pulling black folks' economic power or their money oh together. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, again, working class people are not going to give you their money unless they can be assured that it's going to go toward whatever charity or benefit or whatever. Whatever They're reparations check would happen, would, would help? No, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what would happen if we got our reparation check. Because, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pull... Wait a minute, we have to get our wait, wait. SSI checks from wrongfully over medicating our children okay, so that we can get them and our reparation checks. And that's so what we're going to pull. So what would it look like? Let me show you. Reparations <laughs> for slavery. Well, today the first checks were sent out. Thanks, Chuck. We're standing here in front of the Olympic liquor store in Queens where scores of African Americans have been lined up for hours. We spoke to a few of them earlier. Get the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs> With your broke ass. <laughs> right, babe, I just bought this truck straight cash. And I got enough cigarettes to last me and my family for the rest of our lives. I'm rich, bitch. These checks aren't just affecting things on Beach Street. Wall Street is having a big day as well. A lot of activity, as you can imagine, here on the market. These people are spending money like hotcakes. Get this, Sprint stock has skyrocketed after the news that two million delinquent phone bills have been paid just this morning. Incredible. Gold is way up. Diamonds are at their most expensive level ever. Catchphrase around here is certainly bling bling. Oil has dropped to $1.50 a barrel, while chicken shot to $600 a bucket. Amazing news there. Just about everything on the market is up. However, watermelon is surprisingly flat to find many analysts out there. Cadillac announced that they sold 3 million Escalade trucks this afternoon alone. It's incredible, Chuck. These people just seem to be breaking their necks to give this money right back to us. <laughs> Folks, I am happy to report that the recession is now officially over, and we have nobody to thank but all these black people with their taste for expensive clothes, fancy cars, and, of course, gaudy jewelry. Crime rate has fallen to zero percent. <laughs> How could that be? Did the Mexicans get money today, too? <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Listen, I think we'll be all right. Mexicans don't watch the news. <laughs> yeah, this was Telemundo. <laughs> and that's what it would look like <laughs> if black folk pulled their money together Absolutely. and tried to do anything and with it. And you know it, and you know it, and I know it. So and it is what it is. So, so Miss Smith, I, I understand what you were saying when you say we need to pull our economic strength together but the bottom line to it is you know unfortunately we don't have those great leaders anymore like no. you know Martin Luther King Mecca Evers as well as Malcolm X to organize black folk now we have Louis Farrakhan and so forth and so on but the point is until we as black folk realize that we need to stop running after appreciation and acceptance mm -hmm. from white folk from anyone for that we matter need to We'll Except never get beyond we where we are with this stance Except with Except our Oscars. history and plan to do better. Right. Plan to progress. Right. And the thing with right. the black community is, again, we have always, always had to come from the bottom up. Right. We can do it better than anyone else. Listen, let me, let me tell you something. One 
producer, director, musician that I respect greatly is Ice Cube. The reason why I respect Ice Cube, Ice Cube did not wait for anyone to tell him you can or you cannot do anything. This man created a string of movies that will mm -hmm. be played forever. Yeah. Not only amongst the black community, Friday, next Friday, mm -hmm. Friday after next, so forth and so on. Um, he'll, his movies will be played for, for every generation, yeah. every culture, every, everyone. And I respect that from him. Mm -hmm. He's not waiting for the Oscars. He said, to hell, well, the Oscars, I'm going to do this myself. It's, it's not even about... Appreciation. Right. It comes, comes from, from the fans. Comes from the fans. Exactly. And realistically, exactly. the money that he's making from these movies, the Oscars aren't, aren't aren't giving him movies. You know, they're not giving him roles. He's doing this on his own. And I preach I take my hat off but to you. But you know what? But on this note, when it comes to Jada Pinkett, Will Smith, and any other black person in Hollywood, and I can't purport to know what goes on there. I can't. But it's about self-preservation, so we can't dismiss that. Realistically, we can't ask someone to just burn themselves to help someone else. You, you can't do it. Okay, so if you choose to do it, then that's a wonderful thing. But again, it comes down to self-preservation. Right. Me... I would do it because right. that's just the type of person I am. I got you. You know, and and to Stacy Dash, regarding Stacy Dash's comments, getting rid of uh, organizations like BET and and uh, places and people like that and uh, but entities no, like but that, won't, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to help. No, but she turned around and said, "Oh, well, maybe we need to." Um, did, she, did she say, "Look at the demographics"? of who has given out the Oscars. Yeah, I believe did. that's what she said. But you can't say to just dismiss what BT and, and what else did she say? She said, oh, uh, Black History Month, right, Black, BT. Black History and Month. And yeah, it, it's, it's the pioneers from your black history. And it's the struggles through uh, associations such as BST, BT BT. and all the black right. agencies that have gotten you to this point. Right. So again, you can't just say dismiss all of that right. and now let's check the demographics right. of the people who are right. giving out the Oscars. Yeah, she, because if you dismiss all of this, you'll never have these right. demographics. The Oscars have been around for 75 plus years. How many black folk have actually won an Oscar? Okay, so you can't do that. It's the, because our of awards these and, right, struggles our that award black ceremonies, people right, will integrate there. Our award ceremonies were brought about because of the fact that there was yeah. a lack of a presence for us anyplace else. And you you can't dismiss that. Now, speaking to Miss Stacy Dash. Uh, but the bottom line to it is her comments were very narrow-minded, idiotic, and, and really it epitomized her role as the dumb black girl includes. Well, you know what? Mm, well, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did actually epitomize that. But when I think of Stacey Dash, I don't think of, although she is black, she does not recognize that she's black. And it takes you back to what you said about Jada Pinkett. Again, I don't know if that's, you know, she's doing this because her husband did not get the Oscar. Whatever the case, though, we do know, but it snapped her back to reality. And the bottom line is you are black. You're black. And the Absolutely. same as Stacey Dash, you're black. So you can have all these people, and, and again, in re respect to Stacey Dash. Yeah, but I wish Dave Chappelle's racial draft and, was real, because I would throw Stacey Dash's <laughs> ass back in. I would go send her right with the white folk. Yeah, but, you know, again, embrace your white community. Just don't disrespect your black community. No, we don't need her. Listen, the bottom line to it is neither Vic nor myself are racist at, at all. The bottom line to it is people choose who and what they want to choose. Mm, you can't force them to do anything. No, you cannot. And then we've, we've tried this assimilation thing for God knows how long. We've tried. I think that that battle is a long time coming. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, to be truthful with you, I, I don't want to live in a world where it's, you know, separate, but sometimes separate but equal is, is, is well, fair. And maybe 
in order for us to get the respect from other ethnicities, maybe we, we should be. Ourselves. We need to respect ourselves, but maybe we should be separate so that we can get our own act together. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to stop acting as if, you know, there's no difference between black and white. There is a difference. It's a major difference. Okay, yeah. And before we can move forward, we have to acknowledge that there is a difference. There is a problem. These things were deliberately set in motion. Even if it's something that did not originate during our generations, it has been perpetuated through history. And until we rectify that, we as a black community... Okay, we, we can't expect for the government to fix it, okay? We can't expect for white people or any non-black person to fix it. Let me just put it that way. We need to fix it ourselves. The government did not fix what? Or abolish slavery, per se. Okay, it was our pioneers. It was the civil rights movement that changed everything. It was us. So we kind of set that in motion. We need to set something in motion now. So, those are just my views. Well, with that being said, we're going to leave it up to you guys. You tell us what you think. I'm sure this is going to be an ongoing thing because yeah. I think Whoopi Goldberg has already made some statements about it and quite a few other individuals. And we'll keep you posted with what's going on. But as of right now, I think the biggest person that has issues out of this whole topic today was Miss Stacey Dash. Yeah. Yeah, you need your black card revoked. <laughs> anyway. I'm cute. I'm back. Peace, y'all.